Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel. This is Dixi Joshi. Today we can discuss some questions related to autonomic dysreflexia. What is autonomic dysreflexia? Signs and symptoms. And autonomic dysreflexia is a syndrome in which there is sudden onset of excessive high blood pressure. That means 20 to 40 mm of Hg systolic blood pressure has to be risen suddenly. Then, it is more common in people with spinal cord injuries that involve the thoracic nerve of the spine or above the T6 or above the T6, there is a chance to get the autonomic dysreflexia. Then we can go to the signs and symptoms of dysreflexia. First, one, first of all, the patient uh, blood pressure has to be risen, 20 to uh, 40 mm of Hg or higher systolic blood pressure. For example, the patient blood pressure has 106 bar 78 and has sudden rise to 146 to 98. So, there is a increased blood pressure 40, mil, 40 mm of Hg has risen suddenly. Then the patient feels severe headache, thrombic, thrombic headache, the patient feels sudden onset of headache. Bradycardia also will come. Then sweating, di sweating means profuse sweating. Excessive sweating is uh, ex coming with, with patient with autonomic dysreflexia. Then dilated pupil. Flushing. The flushing will come above the T6 level. Uh, not uh, below the level. Uh, above, the t above the level of injury, the flushing will come. And below the level of injury, the patient may feel pale, cool and a clammy extremity. The extremity should be pale, cool and clammy below the level of injury. Stuffy nose and anxieties. These are the common signs and symptoms of autonomic dysreflexia. Then what are the nursing interventions for autonomic dysreflexia? First of all, we have to prevent this one. Then we have to detect. Third one is action. We have to take the action. These are the main interventions for the AD. When we talk about the preventive measures for AD, Think about three big Bs. That means bowel, bladder and a breakdown of skin. Bladder, bowel and breakdown of the three things we have to remember while thinking about the preventive measures. First of all, we can go to bladder. bladder. This is the common cause of AD. Then we have to empty the bladder properly. So we have to assess the patient bladder. Is it distended or not? So we have to assess the urinary output hourly. What is the normal urinary output per hour? This is 30 ml per hour. So we have to assess. As a nurse, we have to assess the amount of urine. Then uh, bladder can helps to detect any presence of residual urine or not. Maybe it may cause irritate to the patient. So we have to check it. Then take the measures to prevent the occurrence of urinary tract. We have to clean the uh, perineal area perfectly. Um, then if it is catheter, we have to give the catheter hair. So we have to uh, prevent the occurrence of infection to the urinary tract. Then otherwise, if the, uh, the patient feels uh, distended bladder, we have to apply the uh, or inability to void, we have to apply the Foley's catheter. Then while uh, doing the uh, catheterization, we have to avoid the stimulus. So maybe the patient may feel too much irritation and pain while administering catheterization. The stimulant may cause autonomic dysreflexia. So we have to Use the lubricating jelly while the catheterization and thus we have we can uh, reduce the stimulation to the patient. Then another cause is impacted bowel. As a nurse, we have to assess the bowel sound frequently. Then palpate the abdomen, the presence of any distension or the presence of any hard surface or mass, something like that. We have to palpate the abdomen properly. Then ask them, uh, then uh, when they pass the last motion or stool, uh, and how was it? Is it hard or something like that? We have to uh, take the information from the uh, client. Then if it is impacted, use the anesthetic gel 
to decrease the stimulus prior to remove the stroke. Maybe we have to remove the impact by manually. So before that we have to apply any anesthetic gel uh, doing any procedure because it helps to re reduce the stimulus and uh, helps to avoid the occurrence of edit. Then when we talk about the skin, first of all check any binding devices that irritating the skin. So we have to thoroughly inspect the skin, any chance to break down, any chance to infection or something like that. The presence of redness may lead to infection laterally. So we have to thoroughly inspect the skin and give the meshes to avoid the occurrence of um, pressures or um, then ulcer or something like that. Then reposition the patient every two hours. Minimum, minimum we have to change the position every two hours. If it is in the patient is on the wheelchair or something like that, frequently we have to change the position. Then assess the skin regularly, presence of any redness or infection, something like that. Then protecting from pressure injury. These are the measures as a nurse we have to take to prevent the skin breakdown. Then how we can detect is it autonomic dysreflexia? That means we have when we check the blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is 20 to 9, 40 mm of Hg more than the baseline. That means before half an hour or just before uh, the blood pressure was 120, 80. Then now uh, the sudden increase, it, uh, it is in 160 by uh, 100 or something like that. That means the sudden increase in the blood pressure. This is the one sign. Then patient may say uh, severe thrombing headache. These are the another uh, symptoms for the autonomy dysreflexia. So we have to check the BP during that time also. Then assess the un in other signs and symptoms of autonomy dysreflexia. These are the ways to detect the autonomy dysreflexia. Then what to do the signs and symptoms present that is called action. So what is our action? Emergency. This is autonomic dysreflexia is a medical emergency. It need rapid intervention. So we have to call the rapid response team. Okay. This is an emergency. So initial management. Position the patient at 90 degree with the leg lowered. So the otherwise the patient has to be in high foulest position. This is going cause gravity. And pulling the blood into the legs and helps to reduce the blood pressure. So we have to provide the sitting position to the person. Then assess the BP every 2 to 5 minutes or continuous. We have to monitor the blood pressure. Re then remove the tight cloths or any binding devices. Then we have to investigate if the bladder is distended or not. And if it is, we have to take the action. So we have to empty the bladder. Similarly, we have to check the bowel distension, any presence of impact, we have to the take measures. In addition to that, avoid the stimulus that trigger the country condition. These are the things we have to do. That means we that these are the action we have to do when we, uh, when we assess or when we uh, uh, suspect the patient has autonomy dysreflexia. Now we can discuss some questions related to this topic. First one, which statement are true about autonomic dysreflexia? Select all that apply. First one, autonomic dysreflexia is an exaggerated reflex response by the parasympathetic nerve system that result in severe hypertension due to spinal cord injury. Second one, autonomic dysreflexia causes a slow heart rate and severe hypertension. Third option, autonomic dysreflexia is less likely to occur in patient who has experienced a lumbar injury. Fourth option, the first line of treatment for autonomic dysreflexia is, a, is an antihypertensive medication. That is our question, our question which statement are true about autonomic dysreflexia. We learned about autonomic dysreflexia. What are the, what is autonomic dysreflexia? Select all the apply. So we can apply answer one or more than one. We can, we can select. Then what is our answer? Our answers are B and C. 
B and C. So why B, B means autonomic dysreflexia causes slow heart rate. We learned about bradycardia. Then severe hypertension. Is, is it right? Then B and C. C means autonomic dysreflexia is less likely to occur in patient who has experienced lumbar injury. Less likely to occur. It is likely to occur the patient with the spinal cord injury. Not less likely to occur. So our answer is B and C. Why A is false? Autonomic dysreflexia is an exaggerated respo reflex response by the sympathetic nervous system. Not the parasympathetic nervous system. So our answer A is wrong. Then option D is also false because the medications are used only if the blood pressure is not decreasing or, or the cause cannot be de determined. Next one. The physician orders nitropaste for a patient who has developed autonomic dysreflexia, which finding would require the nurse to hold the ordered dose of nitropaste and notify the physician. Options 1. The patient blood pressure is 130-80. 2. The patient report a thrombing headache. Third one, the patient's lower extremities are pain and cold. Fourth one, the patient states they took Sildenafil 12 hours ago. What is our answer? Our answer is D. We learned about this one. While, while giving nitropaste, we have to take the history from the patient if they have taken phosphoditerase inhibitor within the past 24 hours. If it is there, we do not, we have no permission to administer nitropaste. Okay. Then second, third question. What is the best position for a patient experiencing autonomic dysreflexia? 1. High foulest with leg lowered. 2nd, low foulest with leg lowered. 3rd, semi foulest with leg at her level. D. Prone position. What is our answer? Our answer is a high foulest position or 90 degree angle. This is the best position with leg lowered. Leg lowered means it helps to pooling the blood and reduce the blood pressure. So our answer is A. Next question. A patient is receiving treatment for a complete spinal cord injury at T4. Ask the nurse you know to educate the patient on the signs and symptoms of autonomic dysreflexia. What are the signs and symptoms will you educate the patient about? Select all that apply. What is the question? The signs and symptoms of autonomic dysreflexia. This is a select all that apply question. So we can answer one or more than one. It may be all, um, it may be two, it may be either. So first one, headache. Second, low blood pressure. Third, sweating. Next, flushed below the site of injury. Then, pale and cool above the site of injury. Uh, hypertension, slow heart rate and stuffy nose. What are the signs and symptoms? We know that the answers are A. A means headache. C. Sweating. F. Hypertension. G. Slow heart rate. And H. Stuffy nose. Slow heart rate means bradycardia. Stuffy nose, hypertension, headache, then sweating. These are the symptoms. Why B, D and E are wrong? The flesh below the site of injury. We learned about the flushing. Flushing will come above the site of injury. Then pale and cool extremity below the site of injury. So this, this question is in the reverse order. So, what is our answers? Headache, sweating, hypertension, slow heart rate, stuffy nose. These are the symptoms. Next question. You are performing a head to toe assessment on a patient with spinal cord injury at T6. The patient is restless, sweaty and extremely flushed. You assess the patient blood pressure and heart rate. The patient blood pressure is 140 by 98. And the heart rate is 52. You look at the patient chart and find that their baseline blood pressure is 106.76 and the heart rate is 72. What action should the nurse take first? First option, reassess the patient blood pressure. 
B. Check the patient's blood glucose. Third, the position the patient at 90 degree and lower the leg. Fourth option, provide cooling blanket to the patient. When we check, uh, assess the patient, the patient is restless, sweaty and extremely flushed. Okay, these are the signs of uh, AD. Then, the blood pressure, uh, we check the blood pressure, it is 140 by 90 and the heart rate also slow, it is bradycardia 52. So, what how to ask, what action should the nurse take first? What is our answer? Our answer is C. The position, the patient at 90 degree and lower the leg. We can check uh, all other answers. Reassess the patient blood pressure. There is no need to reassess the patient blood pressure because we, we confirmed just before it was in the, on the record it was only 106 by 76 the sudden rise. So uh, does not want to waste our time. Check the patient blood glucose level. There is no intention to check the sugar. Fourth option, provide cooling blanket for the patient. This is also not a good intervention. So our answer is position the patient at 90 degree. That's all. I hope you learned something about the autonomic dysreflexia. Thank you for watching my video. Bye. Take care.